Welcome to the Creative Journey series. My name is Rosemary Geralt and I'm on a mission to share inspirational and creative stories. My guest today, he has operates on the sweet side of life and he made a big step from a pastry chef to making producing chocolate in South Africa the food of the gods as it was once known by the Mayans. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Antonino Allegra. Hello, Rosemary, how are you? I'm fine, Antonino. I would love you to tell me how you evolved from a pastry chef into making your beautiful brand of chocolate that you are doing now. Uh, how did it start? Curiosity, I guess. That's, uh, that's where it comes into place. Uh, being a pastry chef my entire life, I come from a very small town in Sicily, and that's where I started working. I mean, it's a town of 3,000 people at the most, probably at the busiest, three, 4,000 people. Uh, small little pastry shop around the corner where I used to live, and um, I ended up working there in summer as a is there any 13, 14 years old at that time? And now I don't know if it's still legal, but at the time it was normal. Uh, we talk about 30 years ago now. Um, it was normal for uh, to be an apprentice at the age. A garçon is the French, they might call it. Um, that's where it started. So I've been, in, I've been touching and using chocolate and eating chocolate my entire life. And then uh, 10 years ago, uh, actually a little bit more, probably 15 years ago, there was a lot more interest coming in, you know, uh, was the time when uh, pastry chefs or chefs in general, we were so curious about uh, everything, where the eggs come from, where the chicken come from, where the strawberries are coming from, is the cream that I've been using made by the cow that comes from around the corner or not? So all those questions that we were find easy answers because it's, it was very simple. But when it came to chocolate, the answer were very blurred. Uh, there was no real answer. Oh, your chocolate come from South America, but from where, from which farm, who grows it, who, who produce it? I managed to get told of uh, some cocoa beans by chance. Um, was quite difficult at that time. There was no distribution. There was nothing. There was only a uh, rare uh, situation where you could find cocoa beans. And from there, the, you know, the, uh, the whole thing started of like, where do we go with, what do we do with these things? Uh, cocoa beans are originally from uh, South America. America, uh, from literally from uh, the uh, actually from Mexico, to be honest, that's uh, the very first uh, uh, cocoa beans in history that was documented uh, from the Maya and then expanded in the old South America, wherever they were moving, they were taking the seeds with because the seeds would grow in there was the seed the pods that would grow in the back of in the backyard, so to speak. And then it became uh, so important when they start to use it uh, because of the property. Imagine a, a world where sugar didn't exist, where uh, spices almost were very minimal and very rare. And all of a sudden you have this product that contains so much theobromine you know, that's equivalent of caffeine in a certain way. And you drink this uh, mix, mixture of uh, boiled water with cinnamon and other spices, and then you get uh, so much energy, you know, like the Red Bull or nowadays, or even stronger than that, you know, from a population that wasn't used to, coffee didn't exist, all of this, the, this enhancing ingredient to the nexus. So the impact on people was so strong that then uh, uh, priests start to use it in their ceremony. And then from there became like, uh, the, the so-called food of gods, that's why the name, uh, Theobroma, that's what it actually means in, in uh, I think it's Greek, I'm not so sure, but the cocoa beans became a, almost a coin in those areas. And then uh, uh, about hundred and something years ago, uh, there was a massive uh, pest in uh, South America that almost uh, destroyed the entire uh, cocoa beans uh, uh, plantations. Um, they brought some, some uh, uh, seedling and some small plants into Africa where the disease was not yet present and the, the soil managed to, to grasp. The conditions were the same, even better. 
And now Africa produces more than 80% of cocoa beans that is used in, uh, in the world for just about over 100 years uh, in an industry that generates billions of dollars. The cocoa farmer are the last bit of it. And that's something that it didn't sit well with me, with my beliefs in, uh, you know, a more equalized way of making business, you know. Uh, profit is important. Profit is what makes the, the wheel turning. But also it's not fair of me driving uh, two Porsches and uh, probably having uh, three houses while a cocoa, farm, uh, cocoa farmer have nothing and not being able to even send the kids to school or live for less than a dollar a day. So for me, when I decide to jump into this venture and uh, uh, make chocolate for, for a living, I said, okay, well, if I have to do it, I want to do the right way. Um, I still want to have a good living. I mean, that's uh, uh, a common goal for every single person. But I said, if he has to come, and needs to come from a good place and not from taking advantage in, of the cocoa farm. Yeah, I also come from a family. My grandfather was a lemon, lemon grower. And uh, I know the stories. I don't remember. I, uh, my grandfather died when I was a little kid, but my mom and my dad would tell me the stories about, you know, sometimes it was uh, heartbreaking that my grandfather would work so hard in, uh, in the field to grow those beautiful lemons and then they would be sold for, uh, for a loss because there was somebody would take advantage of the situation. So this has always been part of the idea of uh, me having a different relationship with the cocoa farmers. Same as when I was a pastry chef, I would go and visit a, a farmer that would grow strawberries. And I will end pick the strawberries that I want because my customer will have to get the best of the best. So I wanted to transfer all that understanding of uh, uh, sustainability and best quality and everything else from my pastry kitchen into a chocolate manufacturing that until then was mainly industrial. Nobody cared what type of chocolate you get or what type of the ingredients you get, you know. If we break it down, what chocolate is, it's a confectionery item. There is sugar involved, there is fat involved. Fat that come from like the chocolate we make is uh, uh, cocoa butter, but still ingredients, it's still calories that you consume and everything else. The beauty of chocolate is that contains more than 600 flavor compound and contains a lot of antioxidant, a lot of other good, um, uh, ingredient, good uh, properties like uh, a high level of fiber, iron, and so on and on, magnesium, that's all good for you. Mm -hmm. The main component is the theobromine. Theobromine is what makes you feel good. If a caffeine gives you a spike uh, on energy, uh, theobromine, what it does, allows your blood vessel to expand. It means more oxygen goes through your blood, the more blood goes through your body, the valve of your serotonin. And yeah, that's what it's... chocolate makes people feel good. That, that's what it is. So eating five slabs of chocolate a day, that's not really healthy. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if we would buy five slabs a day of my chocolate, but it's not what you would consider healthy. But Having a little bit of chocolate uh, every day or every now and then, it's a lot better, in my opinion. I mean, we, I'm from Italy. We think about food is the, what makes uh, the world goes around. Uh, is rather than try not to, oh, I don't want to eat this, I don't want to eat, just have a small amount. That is a lot better because you satisfied a craving and if you manage to keep a good balance, you can eat anything that you like. Uh, I eat chocolate because it makes me feel good. There is different chocolate for different people. And if it makes you feel better, it makes you feel happy, it gives you, it's a lot cheaper than a session with a therapist. <laughs> I must say, it, it is true. It's yeah. true. And it has an emotional um, antidepressant effect, like you said. You use unrefined sugar cane in your chocolate 
Yeah. What is the difference between refined and unrefined? Would, would that help with the flavor? South Africa is one of the biggest producers of sugar in the world. Uh, South Africa produces a very good quality sugar. There is the, what we call it, um, light brown sugar, so to speak. I like it. What is the difference between a light brown sugar and a white sugar? The white sugar gets an extra process. The light brown contains a little bit more acid, gives a little bit of different flavor. Scientifically speaking, are uh, the same thing. We wanted to call it South African sugar because we're proud of being using our local product, but the law labeling law makes it um, a little bit more difficult. You see that there's a 12 step process from the, the cacao bean to the chocolate bar. So would you like to just give us a short summary on, on how that works? Um, so we get the cocoa beans normally after harvest. So now, for example, we got a batch in June. Now the next batch will arrive probably February, March, because right now they're busy harvesting the product. Once it gets to us, we take the cocoa beans. The cocoa beans get first roasted. Then the shell gets removed by a special machine because you can't do it by hand. Uh, after that goes into a pre-grinding uh, where we turn the cocoa beans into a cocoa paste. And that goes into another machine. There is the finer grinder that turns the cocoa beans with the adding of sugar, sugar and milk powder to make a milk chocolate and so on and on different ingredients for different recipes, turns into a chocolate that that goes into another machine that's called the conch and is a machine where we me as a chocolate maker I develop the flavor we do it within 48 and 70 hours depending on the product um, antonino can i just ask you about the roasting so your milk chocolate you add milk like you've got a 37 percent milk chocolate mm -hmm. and you go all the way to 80 percent dark right yes. is is that to do with the roasting or do you do a medium roast a dark roast or how you know what what is the the difference do you do one kind um, of roast yeah. for all all of the the chocolates that you make not really we have uh, i have uh, simplified the operation I'll, i like simplicity in business i like to keep it as uh, simple as possible because that's where we eliminate a lot of potential risk. But we roast the cocoa beans uh, in two or three type of uh, uh, roast. They all light roast, just depending on uh, time versus, versus uh, um, heat uh, that we try to extract a certain notes of the cocoa beans compared to others. Um, but the percentage of the, uh, of that you see in a packet, that in, that explain more or less how much cocoa beans goes into a chocolate bar. So that now helps me understand why there's more antioxidants in your eighty percent chocolate. Yes, of course. The more, uh, the more, the better. That. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what what are you um, other than you know these beautiful bars you make with hazelnuts and cashew nuts? I think you have in them. Um, what other um, chocolates do you make? And and just tell us about your names, Africoa. I had a different name for the business. Uh, it was actually it was supposed to be called Africoco. Uh, but then when I went to register the the website, somebody had taken the website the address, Africoco, uh, and there was uh, Afri and Cocoa for, uh, I mean, there was very self-explanatory. We couldn't come right because I was like, now what can we do about it? Uh, the person that took the, the domain and didn't want to give up. Um, we said, let's let's remove the Coa, co the, the first part, and we call Africoa. Africoa is technically has no meaning than Afri, from uh, inspiration of Afri Africa and Koa, it's part of that. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's all what it is, yeah. Cocoa beans contain over 600 flavor compounds. Mostly are acetic compounds, so a lot of a bright uh, acidic that we remove when we, we conch the chocolate. 
And then we can play a little bit around. I mean, the, there is a nature of the cocoa beans. So cocoa beans from, Tasma from Tan 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 Tanzania will taste completely different from a cocoa bean from uh, Cameroon or from South America or whatever it is. Even in between the farmers, the farms, uh, there is difference in flavor between the cocoa beans. Would you be able to tell a difference between a South American bean and an African bean? Um, probably yes, because the, uh, South Americans cocoa beans are the one that um, mostly or generally speaking, they taste very nutty, very chocolatey, where African cocoa beans has a more uh, earthy flavor, more uh, uh, tropical flavors, like the one in Tanzania, they're very tropical. There is a lot of pineapple, lime flavor into it, leeches sometimes. Other than your uh, slabs, your beautiful slabs that you do, is, is there anything, any other chocolates that you make or do you just stick to the, the slabs? Uh, so in uh, actually December last year, we started a new environment. So we make our chocolate, in our factory, we make our, all our chocolate slabs and we make the chocolate drops for the chefs that they can use it in their dessert and, uh, and everything else. But also in December last year, in the middle of the worst pandemic ever, we decided to open a new, um, I would call a new section of the chocolate industry, chocolate business. And that's where we do the confectionery side, where we turn the chocolate into truffles, into pralines, into bonbons, and all of this uh, more uh, artistic side of the business, whereas everything is handmade. There is not many machinery involved. All the pieces are cut and, and hand dipped and uh, done everything by hand. So we have all in all about, I would say a selection about 70 to 90 different type of chocolate and flavors involved into that. What are your best sellers? What are the most popular? The most popular chocolate in terms of slabs uh is the chocolate that i almost discontinued uh was is our 55 percent when i made it the people didn't like it then uh, i got convinced by my wife to send the chocolate for a an award for a competition and uh, we won that chocolate that nobody liked it won actually two star uh, two out of three stars and was the very first chocolate made entirely in Africa to ever win an award uh, in Europe. It was a UK competition. Since then, the 55% became our most uh, sold uh, product. The bonbon, uh, we do a killer uh, showbread coated in chocolate that is we can't keep up. Truffles and pralines, that's a very... Uh, it goes and come and go. So sometimes we sell a lot of uh, uh, truffles with uh, uh, with alcohol, or like brandy or whiskey or any sort of alcohol. Sometimes we sell a lot more of hazelnut-based chocolates. Have you got any specials for the Christmas season? We made some baby penguins in chocolate with a Christmas hat. Uh, why? Because, you know, yeah, we could have made a Father Christmas uh, and all this stuff, but we are in Cape Town. We are the we, Cape Town, Western Cape. We have all those beautiful penguins. So I managed to find uh, this uh, very cute uh, penguin. So it's filled with cream and with, with caramel sauce. So it's a beautiful uh, thing to eat. So uh, that's one of the special thing we did for Christmas. We did some gingerbread man, completely coated in chocolate. Um, we launched our vegan uh, uh, milk chocolate, uh, a chocolate that has the same taste, uh, tasting and uh, texture and creaminess of a milk chocolate, but there is no dairy milk. It's made with oats and is going to be the future of chocolate for sure. Uh, more and more people move to a plant-based uh, diet. All our dark chocolate are a plant-based by nature. But people want always, uh, they want the taste of the milk chocolate without the milk. Mm -hmm. uh, so we managed to, to get there. Uh, it's delicious. It's very creamy. And uh, you won't miss 
the normal milk chocolate the once you've tasted it. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So there is a, another step of sustainability there that we have achieved, but we didn't achieve it just to please people. We, I wanted to make a chocolate that was, that could compete in the same field. Uh, and I think I achieved that and I'm very happy about that. Antonino, if people want to buy your chocolate, where, where do they go? Nationwide, we have, uh, uh, we sell in, in, uh, in about 150 to 180 shops at the moment. Uh, the best way is to go to our website, order online. There is nothing better. Of course, now we are uh, uh, on holiday season, so our online shop is closed. Um, but normally you can order online, your chocolate arrive at your house. It's the best way to, to purchase. Uh, or we have a kiosk inside the, the waterfront where we have our, all our entire selection available. Uh, nationwide, in, there is some uh, checkers that they, they have it, a lot of spa shop, a lot of independent cafes and delis that sell our chocolate. Uh, we soon will be available in uh, leading uh, gas station uh, nationwide. There's a potential to have a very sweet Christmas for uh, they, yeah, a, that's lot of, a lot of South Africans and now they know yes. where to go. Um, absolutely. Antonino, thank you so much. It has been so fascinating and so, so interesting. And I want to wish you all the best. And thank you. I just want to say like at the beginning when you told me you did an apprenticeship and in my mind, it, I was thinking that you must be so brilliant as a pastry chef to have that kind of training and upbringing and working a true craft, a true art. Well, the, it's an apprentice that started when I was 14, 12, actually, not 14, 12, and it's never ending. Yeah, it's, uh, you, you never stop to be an apprentice in, in a world, in a work where... Uh, Yes, there is equipment, but uh, each year, each harvest is different. There is always some adjustment to be done, but that's yeah. the beauty of, of what we do. So I really love it. You are not a chocolatier, are you? Are I'm you a, a chocolate ch maker. You're a chocolate maker and you employ chocolatiers. Yes. They, I used to be, I, um, a chocolate maker is somebody that makes a chocolate. It's almost like a musician and a composer. Yeah. I compose the, the music that somebody else can play with. But give me an instrument and I can play as well. But well orchestra, by the sounds of it, you've got this whole... In chocolate, but not in music. Yeah, yeah in chocolate. Okay, have a great Christmas. Thank you, you for too. your time. Thank I you really so appreciate it.